In a world of shadows, we seek illumination. Waiting in the night, we look for sunrise. In the midst of fear, we hold fast to God's promises.
Welcome to worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church from Rochester, Minnesota. However you are worshiping with us this morning, we are so glad that you have found us. For our worship service this fall, we are focusing on stories from the Old Testament. Each of these stories involves a shadow, something that's not so great. However, they also include a promise from God, a promise that helps amid the shadows. Through these stories, we will make connections between God's work back then and the work that God is still doing today, helping us walk through life despite the shadows that confront us. Now let's take time to share the highs in our lives as well as the lows. Feel free to post these in the chat as you feel comfortable.
Let us pray. God of hope, you brighten the shadowed corners of the world. Grant that we may always live in the promise of your word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. John chapter 8 verses 31 through 36. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, we will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Here ends the reading. What is truth? As I read the text for today, that is the question that rose to the top of my inquiry. What is truth? And what is it meant by freedom? When my kids were younger, they too were trying to decipher the truth. As we were grocery shopping one day, their belief of what is true came blurting out. Mom, you, you need to buy the OxyClean because you aren't cleaning unless you OxyClean it. Or, Mom, scrubbing bubbles are the freshest way to keep a clean toilet clean. Or, Mom, Bounty is the only paper towel. It's the quicker picker-upper, don't you know? Or when they really wanted a sugary cereal. Mom, frosted mini wheats keeps us full and focused. Don't you want us to be focused? These truths might not lead anyone to freedom. However, they might lead to a cleaner laundry cleaner toilets, 
maybe cleaner countertops, and more fuller-focused kids, if you believe the commercial. I wish it was always easy to spot the truth versus opinion, but it's not. Today, it seems that many believe truths that come on our social media sites. Many of these truths have way less credentials than these commercials have, and yet we believe it. We don't know who said it. We don't know if they had any credentials at all in saying it. We might not even know where they live. Maybe they don't even live in this country. And yet we determine that that is truth and we fight for it. How do we determine the truth? Here in this text, Jesus gives us a clue. The truth isn't a thing, you see. It's not something that is written in stone. It's something we do. It's something done. It's an action, not a dogma or a creed or a law. To know the truth is to be in a relationship with Jesus and to, in that relationship through Jesus to know God. Now today, red is the color. The color is red because we are celebrating Reformation Sunday. We celebrate the day Martin Luther hung those 95 theses on the door in Wittenberg. What Martin Luther found is that the truth is not something bought. The truth is not something just for a limited few. Everyone, in every profession, in every walk of life, is doing something holy and is doing God's work. This is the priesthood of all believers. Martin Luther also thought and said on that day, and now we believe it, is that we can't earn our way into God's love, for we are saved by grace and Martin Luther also affirmed that the Bible is a place where we get to know God and we get to know Jesus and all of us should be able to read the Bible for ourselves. Here in this text in John, it affirms those truths. People wanted Jesus here to spell it out clearly an answer that could draw a line in the sand so that we could say that some know the truth and some don't. What is good and what is not. But Jesus didn't do that. Instead, in this text, when we understand what truth is, we understand that it is not a noun. It is not a line drawn in the sand but it's an action. We see Jesus is pointing to a relationship with Jesus, God's son, and to God. And that is the only way that we will know the truth. It is in a relationship that truth is found. It is in love. Truth here can more be described as love than what we know as truth. Think about it. God sent down ten commandments, and these ten commandments have to do with two things. It has to do with loving God and loving each other. But people still thought that these ten commandments were a line drawn in the sand. If you don't do them, you're not in. If you don't do them, you don't know God. If you don't do them, you are not part of this body. And God said, you don't get it. Let me show you. I will send you my son so that he can dwell with you. So he can be 
in relationship with you so that he can walk with you, talk with you. That is what my truth is about, God says. To show us that love is more important than drawing lines in the sand. It's more important than saying who's in and who's out. Love is not quoting scripture. Truth is not quoting scripture. Truth is not making laws, declaring some in and some out. Truth is not just speaking it loudly and in someone's face. What truth is, what love is, is loving God and loving your neighbor and being in relationship with each other. If we do that first, all the other stuff will fall into place. And I'm not saying that you're going to agree with everybody, because that is so not going to happen, ever. And God knows this. But you still need to sit down with others, talk with others in love. That is what the body of Christ is. And as I read the news and the paper and I see other things happening in this world, around me, around others, what I hear is people are espousing their truths and needing others to claim it as well. And if you don't, you are out. You are out of relationship with me and you are out of relationship, some even say, with God. But screaming and shutting down others is not the answer. And it is not the truth that God seeks us to have. I encourage you all to sit down with someone else. Sit down with someone you don't agree with. Listen to them. Share ideas with them, not to convince them of your truths, but to love your neighbor. Because that is what God is calling us to do. In a recent leadership meeting of this church, one of your leaders reminded all of us that to be friends, to be in a relationship, to love God as God loves us does not mean we agree with each other at all times. That's not friendship. That's just appeasing somebody. It's a one-sided relationship. To be friends, to be in a relationship, to love, to be one body of Christ, is sometimes be, to be called on the table and tell things that need to be said. And sometimes it's to hear things you don't want to hear, but you need to hear. The truth sometimes stings. Love sometimes is tough. But that's love. That's true relationship. The give and the take. The understanding that we are one body under God. One body through Christ. That's love. In these verses, we are not called to draw lines in the sand. We are not called to say that there is one truth other than the truth that says we are to love God and love each other. That's it. We are called to reach out across the table and get to know the body of Christ. When we love, we gain Christ's eyes. Christ's love. And that my friends, is where freedom comes. And I know that I need to hear this just as much as all of you. And I know that I need to be reminded of this just as all of you. So I did this at Reformation, or I did this um, 
in the beginning at Pentecost. But I'm doing this again because I think that we need this reminder. I have this red ribbon tied around your purse, tied around your keychain, tie it somewhere so you can see it and be reminded that God's love is bigger than your differences. Yelling at someone your truths is not loving. Instead, sit down, have a cup of coffee, talk about it, listen, love, because we are one body. Let us pray. Dear God, you love us. You love us so much that you didn't leave it there in writing, but you sent your son to show us, to break bread with us, to cry with us, to walk with us, and to assure us we are not alone. Help us to see that love, feel that love, know that love so deeply Know that love so that we can help others like you have loved us. Help us to be slow to judge and quick to share your love. Help us to strive daily to seek this truth so that we too can be free. Amen.
United with the whole church, we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your creation, for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who aspire to public office and for all who will vote on Tuesday at local polling places. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit. We pray especially for Merle, Vicki, Joe, Ed, Karen, Magnus, David, Bob, Francis, Byron, Lois, Mark, Chris, Jeanette, Bonnie, Marcia, Connie, and those we name now in our hearts. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, and recovery centers to be holy spaces of renewal, that all might live the abundant life you intend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving re reformation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands, through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Thank you for your continued generosity and support of our congregation's ministry. Your financial gifts and acts of service are an amazing witness to the power of God's love active in our world. You have been helping to brighten the lives of those around you. We encourage you to continue living into the faith practices of giving to this ministry that God has called us to. You may give online through the website by participating in the automated Simply Giving program or by mailing your church to the church office. But again, we thank you for your continued generosity and for the ways that you are witnessing to Christ's love in the world. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Nourish us through your gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love and show empathy to all who are in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. We now get ready to share the Lord's Supper the body and blood of Jesus that he gives to us in the bread and wine. But before we can share that meal, we need to set the table. So make a sacred space and gather up your elements of bread and wine or grape juice as we sing.
Now that the table is set, we hear the story of how this holy meal of communion and promise came to be. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Finally, before we eat and drink the Lord's Supper, like we do for all of our meals, we pray. So let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are now invited to share this meal using the words, The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, we give you thanks that in this holy meal you have invited us to feast with you and one another. May the taste of your promise remain with us, and may our words and our work in your name push back the shadows in the world, inviting others into your bountiful love. Amen. As we come to the end of our worship service, we remember the promise that holds us fast amid the shadows. The promise we receive in baptism, that we are God's beloved child and that nothing can change that. To remember this promise, I invite you now at your homes to dip your finger in some water if you have some nearby and mark yourself or someone else on the forehead with a cross, remembering you are God's child and God loves you. May the God of hope, through Christ our promise, and peace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. The peace of Christ is with you always. Go and share the good news of Christ. Thanks be to God.